Hi, and welcome to our video series on configuring and launching a LAMP instance on Amazon's EC2 web services. In this video, we're going to discuss RDS, Amazon's relational database service, in which one may launch a database, let's say MySQL, which would be our example, in a, an environment that is optimized for database hosting. Let's click on RDS, which will take us to the RDS dashboard, from which we can click on Launch a DB Instance, which is the obvious next step uh, we would really have to take. Here we can choose between different engines, different DBS D database engines, and of course we're going to select MySQL, and we actually have a choice which under normal production environments wouldn't be much of a choice. The current radio button is selected, selects yes for multi A to Z deployment, or AZ deployment I guess, and provisioned IOPS storage. We're going to click no, even though it's a, a naughty choice because we really should want multi AZ deployment and provisioned IOPS storage, but by clicking no, we'll get a better idea of what these two things can do. So let's move on. First of all, the DB engine we have chosen is MySQL. The license model is general public license. That's MySQL is a freely available FOSS software. The DB engine version is 5.6.17. That is the uh, MySQL 5.6.17, but that may not be the engine we actually want to use. Suppose you've created a large database, a MySQL database, on an older version of MySQL, and you're not sure that it's actually compatible with the latest version, or you're sure that it's not compatible. In that case, you may want to select an older version just for compatibility purposes. We'll leave it right now at the most recent version. Select a DB instance class. This is a lot like the regular instance classes. Uh, that we discussed in a previous video. In this case also we're going to choose just for illustration purposes the micro instance, uh, the very smallest instance, but it's obviously not the one for production environments that you would normally choose. Multi-AZ deployment. To select no means that you are taking a risk if something should happen to the Amazon servers where you are uh, based, then there will be no accessibility to your database from the internet, and in fact, your database may be lost permanently. Therefore, Amazon offers you the opportunity to have your database data replicated in an entirely different availability zone. Normally, we would certainly choose yes, of course it costs a bit more, but the security of having a solid backup in a different part of the world outweighs the cost in almost all cases. Right For our purposes, though, just for illustration, we're going to select no. How much storage should be allocated for this instance? We're going with the minimum of 5 gigabytes. You obviously may need a lot more. Should you use provision IOPS? IOPS, by the way, stands for in-out in operations per second. How many people are going to be using your database? How much data are they going to be accessing and adding? And uh, how, much, how many operations are likely to take place over a given period of time? This will determine whether you want to set a minimum number of I.O. operations per second uh, that your database will support. We're just going to, again, select no for now. Now we have to identify this particular instance. We're going to select the default my DB instance as the DB instance identifier. This is how you'll be able to identify this particular instance later in other uh, other dashboard menus. You're also going to select a master username. In our case, we'll also just choose default, which is AWS user, and a password. The passwords should be at least eight characters long, and ideally should contain uppercase and lowercase characters and non-alphanumeric characters just to make it harder, 
a little bit harder, or ideally even a, a lot harder, for it to be guessed. Obviously, this is a very basic but very important security measure. We're now able to choose an availability zone. Uh, we have no preference. Uh, we would, could be able to choose between different parts of the United States, that is, servers that are hosted in different parts of the United States, or in Tokyo, Japan, or other parts of the world. Uh, obviously, you want to select, if you have a choice, you'd like to select an availability zone that's closest geographically to the majority of people who are likely to use your service. A DB security group, uh, we could, and in this case, will select the default, but as we demonstrated in, a, in our video on security groups, we'll define exactly who and how users will be able to access your instance. This is just as important for a database as it is for a regular web service instance, and you will normally have the opportunity to select between all the security groups that you have saved previously. In this case, we have only the default available, and we'll select the default. A da database name, uh, we'll just call it MyDB for now, but uh, again, you, can, you, you should choose a descriptive name that will make it easier for you to figure out which database you're talking about or which database is being displayed for you in a menu. You're only allowed up to eight alphanumeric characters, though. The database port by default is 3306 for MySQL, but you might like to change that for security reasons. If you do, however, make sure that port is actually open in your security group, and make sure it's actually open in your company firewall if this, uh, if the access to this uh, MySQL instance it actually is going to be working through a company fire firewall. Parameter group and option group, these are complex configurations which we don't have to know about now and which we really haven't got the time to discuss now. Uh, but backups is a subject we do have to discuss now and we will make the time to discuss it. A, obviously, data should be backed up regularly. If you have enabled database backups, then Amazon will create backup images of your data every hour, six hours, 12 hours, the question is, though, how long will these backup images be stored? They take up space. You may want to rotate them and, and delete the old ones after a period of time. Well, how long would you like to retain a backup before it is destroyed? Should it be one day, two days, three days? This is set in the backup retention period configuration. Backup window controls when backups will be made. If you would like to select a window, you can say, uh, I'd like my backups to be made between midnight and 1 o'clock in the morning, UTC. And you'd like that window to remain open for, let's say, half an hour. During this time, backups can be created. You should select a time when the user access to your instance is predictably light. You don't want to run backups in the background when your system is under peak stress. You'd like to time your backups to take place when there is as little traffic as possible. These other uh, configurations we'll skip for now. And with all that configured, we'll now click on Launch DB Instance. And we are uh, given the option of viewing our DB instances on the DB Instances page. This can actually take a bit of a while for the instance to actually launch, but now it has launched. It says under Status Available. We'll click the filter box to get all the necessary details of this running instance. However, we can see we have a problem. There are no authorizations associated with this instance. If you hover over the little uh, alert icon, we'll see that we have to edit the security group. So let's edit the security group. We are told to select a connection type. Let's say go with an EC2 security group. We'll stay with default. We'll click on authorize. Let's click once again on instances. And this time we see that the MyDB 
instance is in fact authorized and all ready to go. In this video, we've explored configuring and launching a MySQL instance within Amazon's RDS. We hope to see you next time.